What's going on, everyone? It's Mike back again. Everton and Fulham have drew nil nil at Graven Cottage. Look, on the face of it, a point away from home. Everton have been better away from home. You, you know, if you'd have offered me a point based on the fact I predicted two nil, I would have said yeah. But tonight, John, um, it's very rare that I make excuses for this football team. You know, I always think you beat the eleven on the pitch. You put the ball in the net. Um, that was a stonewall penalty, as I've seen. Anana, a few games ago against Man City, where his ball is an absolute, you know, it's in an absolute natural position because he's sliding into block a goal. Tonight, Everton look like a ball. It's it's going goalwards. I mean, it's going in. And Anthony Robinson puts his arm out and that's not given as a penalty. I can't believe it, if I'm being honest, John. Well, apparently VAR didn't get involved because... Um... His hands were by his side, according to them. I'm not being funny. It was clearly raised because obviously he's had to raise his hands to hit the ball where the ball was. So, again, just said to you before we've we've started the video, Michael, reverse it, mate. And it's a penalty. Any other team, it's a penalty because it's Everton. Again, they're doing their best for us not to go ahead in a game, for us not to potentially get three points out of the game. And again, it's just a corruption and they're doing the utmost in any way, shape or form that they can to not award us a goal scoring opportunity like a penalty like that. It's just so obvious and blatant. They can't even hide it anymore, Michael. And listen, it was one of them games where there was two teams who looked like they couldn't finish their dinner. If Everton get that decision, yeah, we might score. But if we do score, we go 1-0 up. It wins the game because Fulham didn't score hypothetically, because, you know, it could have given Fulham that push yeah, on, yeah. you know, but it was two teams who, you know, were, were very, very poor in front of goal until the end. And I, I can imagine you're going to get on to the end of the game in the minute, you know, the, the chance we had at the end from a yard, two yards out where Beto hits it against his own man. Um, but listen, as you quite rightly say, it's a point. I predicted 2-0 loss. You predicted the 2-0 loss. We both agreed on that. So it's a point away at Fulham. Obviously, results haven't gone our way tonight. With Luton probably pulling off the the result of the season, um, so we did need the three points tonight. But listen, it's not a defeat. It's a clean sheet. A um, few good performances from players who haven't been playing quite regular. I thought Ben Godfrey had a really good game tonight. Yeah, come agreed. back in. Um, a worldy, an absolute worldy from Jordan Pickford. The save there, you know, it was going in. Yeah. Le- leaps up like a salmon and pushes it round. So there was some good performances. Listen, we've been very negative on here lately, which, you know, I've been granted. It's been warranted because we've been very, very poor. But as I say, a point away, a better performance overall as a team. Um, mm. the, the, the clear cut chances that were created tonight was probably by Everton. So, yeah, it's a bit more positive. But still downbeat with some of the decisions that went against us from the, from the officials, the chances we had to probably score and win it at the end, that's disheartening. But the positive is we didn't get beat. <coughs> what did you think of um, what did you think of his team selection, John? Because weirdly, it was almost like he'd watched the video and, and not talking about my team selection with Ashley Young in the middle there and, you know, how he, how he was more adaptable and um, I, I thought I thought the game started. You know, we had that chance after two minutes. Ball comes in, Jack Harrison. He he sort of. I actually think he should do better. Actually, Jack Harrison. You know, with that finish, and you know, I've seen him score more difficult chances than that. Um, and I was really eager. I was really up for it, and it just. Unfortunately, it was almost like both teams just blew hot and cold tonight. There was good moments from both teams and there was some really awful moments. I mean, you know, we will go on to the chances at the end, but, you know, I mean, I've criticised better enough this season, but that chance at the end. It was, do you know what? It's not even the goal mouth scramble, the, the one I think... Well, he had the header. Better. He had the header as the, well. The header. The header's mm. appalling. The header's and appalling. When when you watch it back, you know, you see centre-forwards and you see players miss chances like that. 
if they sort of get over the ball and head it up. But he, he gets the right contact on it and he gets enough right contact on it to head it down and not upwards. You know, he, 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 he's, he's above the ball enough to score the chance. But listen, going back to what you were saying about the beginning of the game and, and the team selection, listen, it was a mishmash team, wasn't it? You know, it was Anana's gone out um, unfit because he's hurt his knee, apparently it's a knee injury. Don't know how long he's going to be out. So it was a bit of a, a mishmash team, as I say. But I actually thought, I can't believe I'm going to say this, I thought we looked a bit more better without Anana being in the team. And that's not a pop of them from the way I normally do. But I think tonight, because of the players he's brought in, he actually changed the way we had to play. And I thought it looked better. Yeah. yeah. If you know what I mean. Um but again, Fulham have struggled in front of goal. We've struggled in front of goal. And I think it was two teams. I think it was plainly obvious tonight it wasn't going to be a 4-4 draw or a 3-2 three, three, win, a 4-3 win to anyone. It was always going to be from the chat. You could see, I said to Frankie halfway through the game, I'm going to finish nil nil this because you could just see it. But then you get them, you get them chances at the end from Beto, and then the goal line scramble where Beto hits it and Godfrey blocks it from going in, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh! I sounded like a sex show in my bedroom watching that. He's like, oh, oh, honest to God, it was just like you're just waiting for the net to move, aren't you? Whether it be the side yeah, inside yeah. the net or the back of the net, and but listen, you know. I'm a bit more positive doing a match reaction than what I was the preview because we both predicted a loss and it's a point. I just can't believe that we're... I'm exerting this, just like you are. I mean, it was an okay performance. I'm not going to sit here and say we pulled up trees, but it was much better than it has been. We're better than what we expected. I am absolutely raging at that decision. Like, I am absolutely raging because... It just stinks of corruption. Like it stinks, and you you do, you do realise there's probably another apology coming in, Malta, from the Premier League and the PGMOL. Well, there's going to be another apology coming in. But how many times have we had an apology? But it doesn't change the fact that it's pro- it could possibly Jonathan was three points, hasn't it? Well, wait, Everton now sit eighteenth in the league. Yeah, and Luton, and Luton have a game in hand. And this is what I said the other day, you know, it looks like Luton are probably going to be the team that we are vying for. Forget the points at the minute. And, you know, Luton are on a good run now and, you know, the beat is as good as and they've won 4 nil tonight. And listen, Luton are, in a, Luton are the form team at the minute, I think, in the Premier League. It worries me. They're finding a bit of form at the wrong time for us. Uh, and it worries me. You know, we are down there. And I also think, Michael, as Everton fans and as a team as well, it's psychological when you see yourself oh, yeah. in the bottom three. You know, it can have a it can have a negative impact on on the team as well. Because listen, players are like fans. They do look at the league table, and when they see themselves down there, it can go two ways. It can, you know, the players can go, "Wow, we've got something. You've got to fight on our hands here," which we know we have anyway. But it's also the fans, and it's deflating when we have decisions are going against us. But like the penalty shout, the goal line scramble at the end, the Beto header, you know, it could have easily been three points. Now we find ourselves in the bottom three. So it is, it's a bit gut wrenching that we couldn't get the three points tonight. There's a there's a one last player I just want to talk about that me and you have asked to see a little bit more of, and he started tonight, which was Arnold Dan Juma. What did you think? Um, he was very direct. He was probably our most direct player tonight when he picked yeah. the ball up. He had the right idea of rolling up the full and back line. He put a couple of decent crosses in. Again, there was a bit of greed in his play. Um, you know, we had the, the snapshot, which I think went over. He probably could have passed it. Dwight McNeil was probably standing about 16 yards out, just inside the 18-yard box. Could have pulled it back, but he chose to smash it. He was greedy, but again, I think he, he offered more as a, a threat than what McNeil and Harrison did tonight. For me, he'd done enough to 
possibly start against Tottenham. I thought he'd done enough. Yeah, well, this is this is the problem. We obviously play Spurs, and you know it looks like Dan Juma's is not going anywhere. I get the impression. I don't think he would have started and even been in the squad tonight if he was leaving to go to Leon. So. I think yeah. I think he'll probably stay. I suspect Everton tried to facilitate him to leave because they did. We've been linked with loan moves for wingers, so there's got to be a reason for that. Um, um, but so, he picked up an injury though, so we'll have to see how that goes as well. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, looking at deadline day, I don't. I don't think any business will happen. I think the only one that might have happened would have been to replace Dan June, but maybe alone, but. I don't think it'll happen. Yeah, there's been two players quite strongly linked with moves away today, which was Michael Keane and Beg Godfrey. Godfrey played tonight, the 90 minutes looked really, really good. Um, I don't think he goes. Possibly Michael Keane may go out on loan late on because he didn't get a sniff tonight. Um, I think the only way we bring a player in or two on loan is if players go out very quiet, very quiet. Put it this way, I won't be staying up this year. No, no. Well, it's... Well, well, we'll leave it there because there isn't really much to say apart from the fact we've been shafted by VAR again. Um, if you was a Fulham fan, would you be happy with that performance? Um, well, listen, they were the home team. I've always said you should win your home games, especially against an Everton team who are on a bad run of form. We've won one and eight. Shot. So I think, yeah. So the <laughs> thing is, mate, I think the Fulham fans and the Everton fans walking out to Craven Cottage tonight... I think the Fulham fans will be more disappointed than what the Everton fans are. Um, yeah. I think I think Everton offered more as a threat going forward than all we had to say from Pickford. I know Paulini put one wide where he probably should be scoring that. But apart from that, the goal line scramble at the end, the VAR, the referee decision, whatever you want to call it, I think Everton fans walk away more disappointed that we didn't get the three points than what Fulham are. Yeah. Cool. Well, and we'll leave it there. I've got nothing else to add, John. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it sounds awful, but we'd usually do a debrief show. But if I'm being honest, I think I we've know, spoke about everything tonight. I, I don't think there's much point. But if look, if there's any news, anything massive, anything scary, we will obviously talk about it. Um, John, the three-day trial essentially is now going on. It will finish on Friday and we will find out mid-February that all them points have been taken away and a transfer ban is in place. I take Fingers. that, to be fair. I, I, I take that. Anymore. The simple fact of the matter, we can't spend anyway. <laughs> so we've wasted enough money. So do you know what? Give us a transfer ban. You know, try and keep the players we've got, our uh, assets, for the rest of the season and hopefully part of next season and start next season better with the same players. I know we're getting too far ahead of ourselves here, but if you do get a transfer embargo, then that's the way we've got to look at it because we can't bring anyone in and we don't want to leave our assets, do we? Lose our assets. No. Cool. Well, guys, leaving it there. Keep smiling. Up the toughies. Everton have drew nil-nil with Fulham. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And make sure you follow us on Twitter, Facebook and all social media platforms. Thank you.